uh, to my friends and colleagues from the, the Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research in Chennai and to everyone around the world who has joined this webinar and thanks for the invitation to provide an update on the sustainable development goals and oral health. I would like to start by raising a number of key issues in relation to the topic, which will include a definition of the Sustainable Development Goals, the burden of uh, dental caries and early childhood caries, and the concept of inequality as a basic human right. Um, I would also like to progress some forward-looking actions and possible approaches to address the challenge of oral diseases through the Vision 2030 uh, produced by FDI and the concept of integration. Uh, this harnessing of the uh, civil society or public voice, um, the model of uh, behaviour change through anticipatory guidance and health coaching, and uh, uh, an example using maternal and child health uh, for improving uh, oral health. I should describe briefly what the uh, Sustainable Development Goals are and their global significance. Um, they were adopted by all of the UN member uh, states in 2015 and there are 17 uh, sustainable development goals and they all progress the idea of ending poverty and other deprivations and through this can be achieved through health education, uh, reduced inequality and an attention to promoting uh, economic growth. So the 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals break down into 169 quantifiable targets uh, measured by 304 indicators of compliance. And these are illustrative examples and it's possible for individual interests such as oral health uh, to set targets and relevant to their own needs or aspirations. These targets are continuously under review and an annual report is produced. Um, unfortunately, the 2022 report does not make uh, great reading. Uh, it talks about the confluence of crises dominated by COVID uh, climate change and conflicts which are creating spin-off impacts and they are affecting the achievement of the sustainable development goals uh, across the world. Of oral health however there have been very significant developments recently and um, the World Health Assembly in May 2021, uh, which is described as uh, World Health Assembly 74, uh, came up with uh, a WHO resolution on oral health. And this was the com combination of efforts by FDI and WHO US Surgeon General's report and the Lancet Commission, and also informed by the Vision 2030 document. And it was described by Dr. Tedros as a landmark resolution uh, for oral health and the integration of oral health into non-communicable diseases. It is, however, uh, noteworthy that 44 years ago at Alma-Ata, preventable non-communicable diseases were targeted and that includes oral diseases, uh, but little has changed in the interim. And 
I'm questioning why this inertia, and particularly as it applies to dentistry and oral health. Uh, well, I think we have been slow to acknowledge it has uh, anything to do with oral health. It's more to do with the treatment of oral disease. So we're concentrating on treatment rather than prevention. And for decades, dentistry has operated an agenda of isolation as opposed uh, to integration. The data and statistics on this slide reveal the tremendous prevalence of oral disease, 3.9 billion people. And the amazing fact is that there has been little or no reduction or improvement in oral health since 1990 or between 1990 and 2017. Uh, this also provides the uh, financial statistics uh, regarding healthcare expenditure, um, which is a tremendous financial burden. This is also, despite the further boost in 2011, where the United Nations political declaration on the prevention and control of NCDs specifically mentioned oral health uh, in that statement under paragraph 19 on renal, oral and eye diseases. That paragraph 19 statement mentioned specifically uh, the common uh, diseases, the common risk factor approach. And here is why it makes such tremendous sense to have oral diseases included in non-communicable diseases. So on the left of this slide, we have uh, the risk factors listed, tobacco, alcohol, diet, stress, and hygiene, and the diseases that they cause. And uh, that ranges from the major non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular disease, cancers, uh, respiratory diseases and diabetes obesity. But these are precisely the same risk factors uh, that cause the oral diseases, dental caries, periodontal disease, erosion, and in fact, some congenital birth defects such as orofacial clefts. And in this slide, I reflect on how health systems fail. And I'm using the example of the NHS system in the UK, which I think is an excellent example of how the concentration on therapy and treatment as opposed to prevention has resulted in such uh, a wasteful uh, system and an escalation in the cost. So the focus uh, on treatment uh, of disease as opposed to prevention makes it what I describe often as a national sickness service as opposed to a national health service, because we only treat the disease rather than concentrate on the risk factors. I'm going to uh, switch to looking at uh, examples of how we might begin to address uh, the challenge of oral health. Uh, in the Sustainable Development Goals. And you can see here the Vision 2030 document produced by FDI and published in January 2021 was based on three primary pillars. Universal health coverage, which is one of the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, SDG 3. Um, the integration of oral health with general health and well-being and workforce considerations in order to achieve uh, the improvements in oral health, all in, underpinned by an educated workforce and education of uh, patients as well as the healthcare workers. And dentists of the future really need to uh, become oral health professionals uh, to be able to deliver oral health for all. So let's concentrate on the, the Vision 2030 integration agenda and 
I'm going to focus on how this could possibly be a game changer uh, in oral health. And I'll take each of these points in turn, integration with medicine, uh, oral health and the SDGs, uh, active involvement in uh, issues outside of dentistry, uh, consulting and harnessing civil society, and looking at marginalised groups. So the first of these uh, relates to integration with medicine uh, for the improvement of overall, overall uh, health and well-being through holistic care. And this should really be looked upon at three levels. Population-wide policy measures, so uh, aspects of lifestyle and uh, poverty, and looking at oral health conditions via advocacy legislation and policy upstream. Community-based programs, which are carried out in various uh, places such as schools, uh, workplaces and aspects of community and the individual level, person-centred healthcare. And we'll come back to these as we progress. I've already uh, shown how logical it is to switch attention uh, from the treatment of diseases to the risk factors. And the aspect I'm just going to point out is at the bottom of the slide, empower patients to manage their susceptibility via uh, a healthy uh, or healthier lifestyle. And we must look for opportunities to bring oral health issues into all of the sustainable development goals. And uh, we can see that strategies should uh, include SDG 10, which is uh, reducing inequalities, SDG 16, social justice, and SDG 17, working in partnerships, which are just a few. So how will SDG 3 um, uh, be addressed and how will that also uh, impact on some of the other sustainable development goals? Um, well, by improving the SDG Goal 3 for healthy lives, we need to look at poverty, inequities, food security, education, gender equality, uh, and these uh, will prompt a trans-sectoral approach and a concentration on aspects of oral health outside of uh, dental. And I'm referring here to an initiative by FDI Working Group who are concentrating on how oral health can encompass all aspects of the SDGs. So this will make the oral health agenda an integral part of many or all of the SDGs through innovation and uh, uh, concentration on integration. Another element uh, of this, that is active involvement of oral health issues um, that are relevant to but broader than dentistry. And I'm giving a, examples here of the sugar arguments and whether taxation on sugar, sugar sweetened beverages would be an approach that we should uh, support and advocate. Um, the phase down of dental amalgam uh, is. Um, a major global issue at the moment and within dentistry we could make the argument that the best possible way to phase down dental amalgam is to reduce the need for its use which is prevention of dental decay and those communication of our stories outside of dentistry uh, for example uh, for years we've um, uh, spearheaded tobacco cessation programs in oral health care teams uh, should help us integrate uh, with other aspects of health and beyond. Here I highlight the value and necessity for harnessing civil society. It's crucial as we seek to drive change. Um, the voices of the public can be used to drive change and 
Uh, an example is given here when the American Cancer Society advertised that women should demand cervical screening from their medical doctors, the rate of adoption uh, shot up. Uh, we could do the same uh, in oral health and uh, the policy um, in health requires political uh, it requires data, it requires evidence, but it also requires a social will. And without a social will, political will is unlikely to happen. Those are quotes that were given to me by uh, a good friend and colleague of mine, uh, Lois Cohen. You may or may not have heard of the James Lind Alliance. Uh, it's a priority setting partnership arrangement whereby the public are consulted. So in the eyes of the public, um, they were uh, canvassed for the top 10 priorities for oral and dental health research. And you can see um, that in the eyes of the public, they want to uh, look for ways of preventing tooth decay, improving access to dental care. Um, now, while this was carried out in the UK, the civil society in all countries uh, all over the world should be consulted uh, to ask their uh, input and make their voices heard. It is also important uh, that we acknowledge and embrace the fact that in dentistry, uh, we have unique access to a healthy population. So dentists of the future uh, could be the vaccinators um, uh, in the current climate. That's um, a very uh, significant role that we played during uh, the pandemic. Um, enhanced screening, uh, health coaching, uh, and looking even at uh, blood pressure and blood sugars in consultation with our medical colleagues uh, could be an extremely useful way to address non-communicable diseases. And on that front, the encouragement of the six monthly regular checkup for scale and polish could be a very uh, useful way of addressing this agenda for primary prevention. Here is another health measure where dentists could have a unique input, and that is for encouraging exercise or reducing sedentary lifestyles, where dentists are well placed to try and improve the uh, encouragement and advocacy for sport and for reducing the risk in sport by provision of mouth guards. And of course, exercise has the dual effect of um, uh, uh, um, an improvement of physical health and cardiovascular health, but also uh, mental health. One of the SDGs and one of my own interests or passions is to eradicate inequality. And therefore, the most vulnerable and marginalized must not be left behind. And on this slide, I'm advocating uh, for actions on things like cleft lip and palate, and also canker morris or noma. I use the example of dental caries in patients born with orofacial clefts. And here are strong arguments for ensuring that children born with clefts are not left behind. So pointing out that oral clefts are severe congenital anomalies, and long-term outcomes are compromised if the dental health is poor. Uh, the higher prevalence rate of dental caries and early childhood caries is evidence-based. Primary prevention and care interventions uh, for people born with clefts can be integrated into maternal, newborn and child health services. And this care should be affordable and all members of the uh, cleft care team should be able to provide uh, oral hygiene where it's required. And 
optimal oral outcomes, uh, our health outcomes are a basic human right for all, uh, and that includes the marginalized populations. And here is how we apply the principles of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, in oral health care uh, for cleft lip and palate patients through comprehensive cleft care multidisciplinary teams, uh, access to affordable uh, health care, and the interdisciplinary team should be committed to prevention and a way of uh, dealing with this is through antenatal care services where cleft lip and palate patients um, do attend multidisciplinary teams from uh, birth. And finally, we must involve the upstream stakeholders and have a unified voice. And in the World Health Assembly 74 in May 2021, when that resolution for the integration of oral health into non-communicable diseases, um, it's noteworthy that that was supported by the World Heart Federation, the World Stroke Organization, International Society of Nephrology, International Diabetes Federation, um, and they all were in favour of oral health being a non-communicable disease. To emphasise and underscore that point, here is a document that is produced not by FDI or WHO or IADR, it's actually produced by the Non-Communicable Diseases Alliance. And they point out that oral diseases are associated with a number of other uh, non-communicable diseases, such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So they acknowledge the role and the value of oral health. My final comments are uh, reserved for what I feel is a very important concept that runs throughout uh, the NCD's agenda, behaviour change. And this concept of uh, health coaching through empowerment of uh, the individual to look after their own health um, which is underpinned by uh, psychological theory. And basically it's uh, been able to um, allow the individual to take greater responsibility in looking after their own health based on their own uh, current lifestyle. And the other important aspect of this is that it is possible to cascade health coaching uh, because it is a learnable skill. And the impl uh, implementation agenda uh, can be done through anticipatory guidance, which is a well-known uh, paediatrician term for uh, intercepting and avoiding problems that might occur uh, in the future by anticipating them and taking actions uh, to ensure that the risk is minimised. In the context of oral and general health, uh, we have in the past used uh, what is described as the health education model. I don't expect you to read what's on the left of this slide, but basically the health coaching approach uh, is based on uh, anticipatory guidance, motivational interviewing, and this being patient-centred uh, will facilitate patient engagement towards their self-identified health goals. And that is something that can be applied to all of uh, the non-communicable diseases through uh, behaviour change. Where are we going in the future? This slide emphasises uh, upstream policy issues that will uh, aim to ensure sustainability and embed oral health uh, in non-communicable diseases and to start at birth. So embed oral health in maternal and child health and ensure that we continue to carry out robust research 
for evidence-based practice and interventions. So you'll see the role of IDR coming into all of these um, policy uh, statements and uh, that's an aspect that we must embrace. So clearly this was uh, involving anticipatory guidance and as a result of uh, the efforts um, to answer the question is it working dental health in Scotland has been shown to be improved to the extent that 60% of the primary seven age group uh, have no obvious dental decay. That was one of the objectives that was set um, and it was hailed as a fantastic success story by the Scottish Minister for Public Health and Sport in 2019. My last slide brings us right up to the present. Uh, here is a comment by Antonio Guterres, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations, saying we must rise higher to rescue the Sustainable Development Goals, stay true to our promise of a world of peace, dignity and prosperity on a healthy planet. And while there are uh, challenges and crises in the world, in oral health, we are continuing to make strides to deliver that promise. I'm, I'm confident uh, that we can make uh, real advances in oral health and aim towards the sustainable development goals as we progress. But I would like to thank everyone for their uh, kind attention. But I would and, like to uh, thank. I'm very happy to uh, recommend that uh, you place your questions um, in the Q&A and the chat uh, if there's anything that uh, you have uh, picked up during the presentation.